When I pull up on you, then I might swear, I Dribble off deuce, deuce, I That you might work, I When I pull up on you, then I might swear, I Dribble off deuce, deuce, I That you might work, I That you might work. Welcome back to another episode of the Michelle Mattis Podcast. I'm Jox Michelle. And I'm Jackie Michelle. Welcome back. Hey, guys. Yeah, this one <laughs> is uh, a Pillow Talk edition, just so, you know, give you a heads up. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's not even been a crazy week. I just feel like... It's no, it's a chill weekend. Yeah. Let's just talk about chill things. Yeah, some, something kind of light for the people. Like, we were trying to figure out, man, what should we talk about? And we kind of stumbled into this one. Yeah. But um, I think it's super relevant. And yeah. Um, and we'll come back uh, the next episode starting a new series. So, Oh, news to me. News to you. I'm glad. And the listener. <laughs> I'm, I'm finding this out the same time as y'all. So yeah, new series on the way. Um, I'm very interested to know what it's going to be about. <laughs> so I hope y'all enjoy that. He knows what it's about. Oh, I guess I do. Hey man, when you get married, this one thing is like, I mean, oh if she say God. I do, then yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what are we talking about today? Man, we talking about people going crazy. Um, Should we use that term? Oh, you know what? And I tweeted this. I really did tweet this. <laughs> that I don't like to label people crazy. And yet, here we are. Yeah. No, you know, people make mistakes. Okay. So I literally tweeted that I don't like to call people crazy, but I know unstable when I see it. Okay, so um, let's say unstable. All right, so people have been going unstable or being being unstable. Yeah, or acting. Acting unstable. And it led us to like this weird, or not rabbit hole of a discussion, but it's like in in Hollywood, is that like the norm, right? Like you just get to a point where, I mean. Holly weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know. And then how do you not get there? Yeah, I, that's I another that's, question. That's, yeah, that's interesting. So, okay, um, this this first story because I want to like start off light and then we get like into to the, the I don't heavier. Know if this is light, but okay. to me it's light, a little lighter. Um, and this is you gonna have to leave with this story, but it's about Tamar and and suicide. Okay, you gotta <laughs> you gotta go further into it, like but this? yes, Tamar Braxton and her. Yeah, it was it was a suicide attempt. Yeah, so I think why you're saying it's light is because there have been a lot of speculation that it may not have been a real suicide attempt, mm-hmm. um, or it may have been in order to get out of a contract with like We TV. So she has a show with her sisters. I never really watched it like that, um, but I know enough about it because there's so many seasons that. You know, I know the family at this point, and everybody kind of knows their life. They're kind of like the black version of the Kardashians. The Braxton? For, for reality TV, yes. As far as family. Okay. Um, you putting me up on game because I know nothing of this. Yeah. I think so. I think that's the only family we can kind of relate them to. Okay. But um, so basically she was just feeling like, so they say, that she needed to get out of her contract. And there people say that in order to get out of their that contract, you would have to prove um, that you're like unstable. Mm-hmm. So there was a, a whole nine one one call um, made by her boyfriend, and he was just saying like, "My girlfriend's on like she's not waking up. Um, you know, she's been taking these pills because she's depressed." And then he started getting into like she sent a letter to the TV to the network and she's been working with them and they don't you know respect her or whatever and they don't want to like break the contract and I, so I've never had to make a nine one one call <laughs> but I would imagine if you were unconscious you were not waking up I don't know that I would be talking about your job at all yeah. Personally, um, so it, it's just kind of strange. Some people are saying that she was just taking sleeping pills, um, and that's why she wasn't waking up because she was asleep. But I do think that even if it wasn't a suicide attempt, 
there's still something mental there because for you to even do that and it's not a suicide attempt is still a sign of how unstable you are. Yeah. So um she's always kind of been the more out there sister, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows Tony, but she's like famous for being like the the wild sister, I guess. And all her business is always out there. So I can understand why she would want to be out of the contract. I just don't know. I don't know what to believe at this point. For me, because I, I don't <laughs> want to like get too deep in like the speculation that, it yeah. was, you know, she planned all this and that. I but, mean, like, you never know what to believe with celebrities. The the thing for me was that Tamar, to, from what I know, because I don't know much about Tamar. I just, I, I seen her a couple of times on the reel. Um, and like, she was always to me, one of those people, like strong personality, right? She was very out there, like very outgoing. Yeah. And you know, how it's like always, you know, check on your strong friends, right? Mm. Because the, the, the 911 call or when, or when I originally saw the, like the news, it was that she was like taking pills and drinking. Yeah. So for me, right. And I think for most people, when we see stuff like that and it's like, man, like, typically we associate, like, you know, people who are taking pills and, and, like, drinking have those type of weird addiction. Not weird. I want to call it weird. But those type of addictions that they're, you know, you might be, like, depressed or, you know, you're going through something. And for us, like, Tamar is, like, a strong individual. And you're, you're famous. Like, you got money. Yeah. And we just don't necessarily, like, man, like, what is it that you have to be... Like, what's so depressing Down in your about, life, right? Right. Um, and I think that's what we commonly do with celebrities. Yes. Where it's like, because, I mean, we're seeing it all the time. Like, rappers and, and just celebrities in general committing you suicide. Yeah, but they end up committing suicide. Yeah. And having addictions to pills. And it's like, I look at somebody like Lil Wayne, who, at my in my younger years, like, vibrant, right? Like, he was... The, the guy that everybody wanted to be like and the girl the guy that girls wanted to be with, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. and then to see him now where it's like But <sighs> all of I mean, what you see now is just an after effect of what was happening while he was up there. I mean he was rapping about stuff that he was doing. At least at least he was sticking to what he was it, talking about. Early on, his raps were not so much drug like related. Yeah, it wasn't like full of like you know, like a lot of these kids now, when I listen to the music, I see it. Like, oh, you yeah. kid, the kids are depressed. They're depressed, yeah. But, like, Lou was never that guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he talked about smoking weed and stuff, but in hip-hop terms, that's pretty basic. Um, well, yeah, and I think in the, I guess, on the topic of Tamar, because, I mean, we can mention her strong personality, but that doesn't necessarily mean she's a strong individual. I think we all have feelings and you know episodes of being down or being happy or then being sad and then you know so she could be out there and that could also just be a way to hide whatever it is that is truly going on Mm -hmm. you know um yeah i mean i think i'm more confused when celebrities actually have that support system from family, from when they were younger, friends, and that's a big family. So it's like that support is there. Whereas like, I don't know, another celebrity where it's like, where are your friend? Where are your childhood friends? Why are you oh, acting like that? I, I, the, the next person we're going to talk about. Yeah. I have that question. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can get into it. Well, before that, because I kind of wanted to. I like the the two people that we chose to speak about. So first for Tamar, because I didn't want to get too caught caught up in just Tamar. I had more issues with like the situation. So like someone who's a celebrity, someone who's famous, someone who has money, and like you just pop your pills, you drink into the point of like passing out and and almost dying, right? And it's for me, um, man, what is it about? That lifestyle, because it seems yeah. to be very like common in that lifestyle. What else do you do? To to okay, don't get me wrong. 
I, I can understand why people partake in certain libations, right? Like, why people drink. Libations. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I understand, like, why some people drink, um, why some people may partake, you know, um, some uh, some mind-altering substances. Mm-hmm. Because you know, th- there is, with with anything, there's always that, like, there's the, there's the good in it. Um, so, I can see why someone may partake in it. But to get to the point where you, like, abuse it. If you're taking pills to the point that you pass out, you're not having fun anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not recreational at that point. Yeah. At that point, you're, like, covering something. You're, you're masking something. Um, when you drink to the point that you pass out, I mean, I've never gotten to that point. But I've drunk to the point where it's like, this isn't fun anymore. Why yeah. am I even doing this, right? Um, and it's, I, don't, I just don't know what it is about Hollywood that gets people to that point. Um, I don't know. And, well, I, I, I guess it's a, uh, this is a point, but do you have, do you have to be willing to go there, right? Like, is that the cost to be successful? I mean, I would say no, because I see other celebrities who obviously you don't know their life, but you never really hear anything problematic about them. Um, I, I would say, and they're not to the level of like you know. I would a say a lot of these other celebrities that but before, they're still famous. That before, like things started to go kind of crazy, no one would have ever thought that Whitney Houston was doing crack. You know what I'm saying? Like people can seem like they're living this life, yeah, that they're okay, but man, Whitney Houston was on crack. But I'm not going to lie. People have been talking about that. It's kind of like the R. Kelly thing, right? Don't compare. But can, but, hey, you, I'll let you finish. Bro. As far as time-wise, <laughs> yeah, now it's like, oh, yeah, let's do a whole series about this terrible guy. But even when it was happening, people knew it was happening. And there was nothing different about his lifestyle. It was just, oh, now everybody knows about it. Like... In the 90s, Whitney was doing crack. Like, we just didn't know about it, maybe, but there was still speculation. Like, there was even if you um, didn't know for sure R. Kelly was doing that, you would still hear, like, Wendy Williams talking about stuff on her radio show or whatever. Like, it was just little tidbits of, oh, yeah, rumor report, you know? Yeah. I, so I, people knew. The, the question I have more so is because I use Whitney as an example. Yeah. Because she doesn't seem like the the person right yeah that would have ended up on crack if she was not in hollywood that wasn't would her she, brand would she have ended up on crack if she wasn't in hollywood i mean only only jesus knows that but yeah but i mean th- we have a I podcast hear I hear we're here to speculate yeah and i think there is something about reaching certain levels of success yeah that i think it's, the cost to be the boss, right? But that's why a lot of people are like, cause, cause I feel, especially in Tamar's situation or any celebrities, I feel for their kids mm-hmm. because even for you to do that, you're risking the chance of like your son being taken away from you or whatever the case is. Like, even if it was just sleeping pills or if it was just one more drink than you needed to have or whatever, like, what about your son? <laughs> That's the thing about addiction, though, right? At at the point that addiction becomes a problem is where it's like, even the consequences Don't aren't matter. enough to stop you, yeah, from doing what you're doing. But here, but oh, I was gonna say that's why they say like the best type of rich and famous to be is like Silicon Valley type. Like, but you're not nobody, famous. Well, and that's the and, that thing. Well, that's, that's the, the thing. Like, you still have the money. You have just as much money if not more and you have your privacy yeah for the most part because nobody like they they might know your name but nobody really cares about how you live i can't i i don't think i can pick elon musk out of a lineup yeah oh you don't think you can no i don't know i don't i don't know if i even know what he looks like you know what he looks like maybe i I don't remember off the top of my head maybe and you don't care to google what steve Ballmer. don't know what he looks like 
right? And it's like these people are some of the richest people in the world. So like, yeah, yeah the Silicon Valley thing is just the rich part. Yeah, they don't have the famous part. And I I think this is very very like particular to like Hollywood. Yeah. Um, I definitely see. You mean just like music? Yeah, the, film, the entertainment, entertainment film. Because even in like sports, sometimes you'll see the the drug problem, but a lot of times they don't have the same money though. They have more. Don't do that. They have more. the The average musician than like does a not make more. Show? The average musician does not make more than the average athlete. Athletes have guaranteed money that they get every year. Uh, musicians like, did you have a hit song? No, you're not getting paid. But I would also <laughs> include them in the entertainment business. I don't, but they. I don't. <laughs> For I the think, most part, I think a lot of the the drug problems that come with like athletes. I'm talking about the A list athletes. <laughs> you name an A list athlete that has a drug problem that we know about. Current A list or any A list of, of all time? Current. Because I was going to say Dennis Rodman. Current. And he was big. Current? No, he wasn't. Current. <laughs> well, he was never an A-list athlete. Let's let's do that. He was. I'm not he talking was, about ability. I'm talking about status. Eh, fine, but name a current one. Um, I don't. You know, I don't know. I know, like that. <laughs> but the thing <laughs> is, like, I, I can say it doesn't happen that often. You I can would, you, you could name one. I don't I, know. Them. I struggle. The the one I can think of is Josh Gordon, don't and know him. you don't even know him. And he, yeah, but that's just me because I don't care. He's more famous for being addicted to weed than for his ability as a football player. The 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 the, the drug problem that issue doesn't seem as prevalent in athletics. I think I think it's just a whole different dynamic. It's more of a meritocracy where like the people who are at the highest of athletics are there because they're good. We don't always say that about musicians. Right. And like actors, sometimes yeah. it's who you know, what you did to get there. Yeah. Right? That's why the Hollywood part of it is so there's there is something go- I really think there is something <laughs> going on in Hollywood that's causing these people to go crazy. Dave Chappelle. Crazy, you said it again. Ugh. Ugh. So I'm working on it. <laughs> God ain't done with me yet, right? So so Dave Chappelle had this whole thing and it came out recently, and this is a good segue into the next person. Um where he talks about just the business. And he's saying, he started talking about uh, Martin and how, I don't know if you remember when Martin had that period where people thought that he was unstable. Um, and he was saying that in his interactions with Martin, like he saw Martin have a stroke. And then when he asked him, like, man, how you doing? Martin was like, man, that was the best sleep I ever had. Wow. And it was like, what? And he used it to say that, Martin's like a really strong individual. Yeah. Like a stroke was just a good sleep for him. Yeah. But then he's on a corner of a street holding a gun saying that they're trying to kill me. And it's like, what drives the guy who thought a stroke was a good sleep to that point? Mm-hmm. And then he, he used himself and he said, what makes Dave Chappelle want to go to Africa and turn down a $50 million contract? <laughs> What what gets these people, these so called strong people, to get to the point where like people think that they're unstable? He didn't get too into it. He kind of said the industry is weird. Yeah, and he thinks it could be the industry. Um, and I I, I think I, is it the industry or is it the money? I don't want. I think it's a combination of the two, right? I don't want to because when you leave it out there, it can make it seem like oh, you know, these because executives are trying to Terry Crews you. Because I, I don't want to make it seem like uh, the rich people in Silicon Valley don't have their own situations, too. It's just not in the limelight. You know it's I mean? not in the limelight. and So they Sil- probably spend their money on things that are like, whoa, this is nuts. Silicon well. Valley, kind of <laughs> like athletics to me, meritocracy. You don't become rich in Silicon Valley if you aren't smart or, with, or have work with people who have great ideas. Right, you don't you don't but sleep your way inter- you you don't sleep your way to the top of of Hollywood or of Silicon Valley. You don't um, you know it, it doesn't know that. <laughs> I'm gonna say that um, man, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, the CEO of Facebook, um, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. 
I don't think he did anything. Well, okay. <laughs> At the beginning, I don't think he did anything crazy. Okay, but or, or when the money comes is when it's like, okay. We'll get there. What's going on? Okay, we'll let's get, get there. there. Well, I, I want to go through this one first. Let's talk about Kanye. <laughs> my man, Ye. Your man? That that was my man, yeah. I'm I'm not going to simply drop him by the wayside. That was. He's been doing some wild stuff. But I don't want to throw nobody away, right? Um I'm gonna challenge you though. I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So Kanye. And and this is where I feel like this defers from the Tamar thing. Or the Tamar, not Tamar. The situation of like celebrities with like these addictions. Kanye is, you know, I want to say humble, but started from humble beginnings in the music industry. Right. Um, literally, people weren't giving him a chance. He finally had a chance. He blew up. He became Kanye West. Um, he, a lot of people want to attribute it to this, the Kim. Right, like, oh, he joined the Kardashian clan, and since then he's he's yeah. lost his rocker. Right, mm-hmm. he's gone off his rocker. Um, I don't want to do that. I, I don't. I don't think, believe that's the case. Yeah, and I also feel like he chose the Kardashians, as toxic as they are. Yeah, he he chose the Kardashians at the point where he got with Kim. Kanye was one of those people who probably could have got with any woman that he wanted, and did, and yep, yeah, and did. <laughs> so so it wasn't it wasn't one of those like. The Kardashians like trapped him um, into a relationship. He yeah. chose that. Yeah. He wanted that. Um, I think he kind of saw what Jay had. He tried to go get him a woman he thought was. <sighs> I, I, this is just my assumptions. All my assumptions. But I feel like he <sighs> chose this, right? Um, and his issues are a lot more different than the 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 backpack rapper. Who's depressed? He is the backpack rapper. No, but the backpack rapper who's depressed and makes sad music all day. Um, so, what are his issues? For me, I think he has a chemical imbalance for sure. Okay, and this is where I'm going to jump in because I can agree with that because people are saying, "Oh, he's been doing wild stuff lately." The man started off doing wild stuff. I wouldn't say he started He's off doing wild stuff. always done wild stuff. He did not stuff. start off doing wild stuff. And I don't know what happened, you know, because I feel like, was he the one in the beginning that they were like, oh, he was shot so many, like that, I know 50 Cent, They were that was like, oh, he got shot, shot nine times, shot yeah. nine times. And then they were talking about Kanye getting shot in the face or something he like that. He didn't get shot in the face. He was in a car accident. Okay, but that was the rumor. The right? rumor was never that he got shot. Oh. It was always that he got in a car accident. Okay, so I don't know what happened prior to his fame to make him, you know, Kanye. But when he was famous, he I mean, when he was famous early on in his career, he would go on TV and say stuff like, George Bush doesn't care about black people. I True as it can be, I don't know. <laughs> but that is not a typical outburst of someone who is you know getting paid for a live recording again um going up and you know going up on stage while taylor swift is getting her award that's not typical behavior of someone like in their right mind uh what else did he say even before today's time George were, Bush? no i just said that oh, there yeah. were other outbursts though he may have. There were a lot. I, he, that that made that made him Kanye. It was just he swung on a different side of quote unquote crazy that was more palatable to you know the culture. I think, and this is where I fall with Kanye. All those things that you're talking about, I think, are more true to core Kanye than what you see now. That kind. The, the Kanye that says George Bush doesn't like black people is the same Kanye from College Dropout. To me, it's the same Kanye who makes, um, yeah, it you know, was on the, one the side. Police, that's how I treat him by way out of jail, but we can't buy freedom, right? It's, to me, that's the same Kanye. That was just another I, side. I don't think it's another side. I think it's, 
I attribute this more to someone. We talk about it, but I don't know if people address it enough. How Kanye changed after his mom died. Um, and this is where I don't know if it's a Hollywood thing, but I don't know if he ever recovered enough because of the industry. I don't know if it, if it was an industry thing, but I don't think he ever really took the time necessary to recover to from losing his mom. For the sake of this argument, I'm going to blame the industry, right? I've done no research on this, <laughs> but... <laughs> I think all of it has a, has a play, has a role yeah, in it. I think so. I really think oh, so. Oh, I know the other outburst. It was when he was... um performing somewhere and he was like jay-z don't yeah. come for me I that was that's more recent it. though yes but that was like before the trump situation yeah for sure um so then so now where we see kanye now and to me it's at some point is this strictly just his chemical imbalance or at the same time is the 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 desire to be as famous as possible driving him to this point? Um, I feel like he's always been in this weird competition with Jay Z. Um, I feel like a lot of the things he does is in mirror to Jay, like yeah. trying to find his power couple wife, his aspirations to be you know Walt Disney and all these people, right? I think it's because Jay is who he is. He always, I mean, you look at, I mean, in Jay-Z's lyrics where he talks about Kanye a lot and he's saying, you know, he talks about the side eyes that he got from Kanye when they were doing um, the the Paris record. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, yeah, I feel like he's he's in a weird competition with Jay. And man, to, to, to get to the point where you're a billionaire... What did you do, right? What what part of yourself did you have to give up to get to this point? Um, and before I get into like how I think we are affected on this, at, at, at we have I think we have these same issues. Maybe it's not to the level of the Kanyes yeah, and the not. Tamars, but we we have our own. But I did want <laughs> I did want to read some of Kanye's tweets. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to. These okay, so he tweets. Um, everybody knows the movie Get Out is about me. <laughs> I'm sorry, right? Like, I mean, I wouldn't say he's the inspiration. Even the 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 film's director said that his life is the inspiration behind the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but there were for sure memes, yeah, created with Kanye's face on it, and I agree. And Could the the Kardashian family. Is the family that's holding him hostage because I, I do think they play a part in this, and yeah. they are definitely a family that you have to question. What what are you really willing? They embody what are you willing to do to be Everything. rich and successful? But that's what I'm saying. Everything, but this is, anything. But is this Hollywood? Like to I the point where you would sell your daughter's sex tape. It's like this, oh, right? Oh, man. I'm sorry. So I don't want to be rich that bad. I swear. <laughs> I don't want to be rich that bad. Some people... We'll look, get there. We'll get there. Look. They... It's like what we said. Or you always ask the question. You know? Um, do you have to do something? in, or, or do you have to be some level of grimy in order to be that guy? Mm-hmm. And... I think they are living proof that you do a lot of the times. Um, because even the people that we don't hear about, you know, you talked about Jay-Z. I love some Beyonce. But we don't know what they do behind the scenes. I mean, we've seen and some that's of it. Just, we've seen some of it. What you mean? I mean, the members that have left the group. The the uh, Yeah, but that's every group. I'm talking about, like, but why? the shady stuff. But, but we don't why know. Are they, why are they leaving the group? <laughs> did do we did we know for a while what any of those other people sounded like other than Beyonce and when they weren't harmonizing? Yeah. Like, is that the is that what you have to do 
You have to start a group where, well, you, where they, we knew what they your parents like. make sure so they didn't need to be in the group. You are highlighted in the group in order for you to be more successful and eventually have your own solo career. Is that what it takes to be successful? Maybe. Obviously. Is that right? Okay. I don't know. But, but, all right. but that, let me just talk about the Kardashians again. Because I yeah, don't we'll know. There. I want to stay there. Because <laughs> I got more. Yes. Because even for... You're, you're going into Kanye's tweets. And I just feel like, where is your community? Because mm-hmm. if, if this is your new family, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if, if you don't talk to anybody in Chicago anymore. If all those people are no longer good for you, I get it, right? Maybe you, you're like, hey, you're not going in the same direction I'm going. We're just going to need to part ways. But there's no auntie, no uncle, no play cousin, not, nobody from Chicago that you still talk to that could be like, you know what? Let me, let me take your phone real quick. Like, let me, like, where is your wife? I mean, obviously now we know they're not even in the same state, but. Like, where is, where are those people? Because if you were tweeting crazy, I'm not going to let you tweet crazy. <laughs> like, that's just, and you're not, like, no one's going to see your tweets the way that they see Kanye's tweets. You know what I mean? And I would still take your phone away. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't understand that part. And that's the the toxicity that I don't get, that I don't understand um, that's coming out of this Kardashian family. Like, there's no intergenerational situations. Where's the grandma? The grandma is, I mean, technically the grandma is Chris and she's trying to be like the teenagers in the family. And then where are the, the older people? Like, where, who's keeping y'all humble? Like, it's, I agree. I, I think don't that's, get it. I think that's really important, right? When we think of the, Famous entertainers um, that, one, I guess, let us into their lives to that point. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of famous people who don't let us into their lives. Yeah. We don't know nothing about them. We don't need to. Um, we don't. But, I mean, in at this level of, at this point in social media and all that, if you aren't a Beyonce, if you aren't a Rihanna, you kind of have to give us something to keep us invested. Why should we care about you? Yeah. Um, and a lot of times that comes at the cost of your personal privacy. Um, you got to give us a lot. I think the Kanye thing, and I want to use an example. Like you think about Jay. And I, I keep using Jay as a juxtaposition because I feel like they have, there's a competition there that Kanye is, I'm telling you, he's living out of his There's mind. a competition that only Kanye is involved Go in. back and listen to the lyrics of Big Brother and you'll see it. Um, Jay-Z is at home quarantine. He is, right? And it's, it's Jay, for the moment, we don't consider Jay to be unstable. But at the same time, you look around him like he has a really core group of people yeah. that have been around for a long time. The like same Tata, Emery, like all these people that have been, there is no one from Kanye's life where it's like, oh, that was a childhood friend or this is somebody I kind of came up in the game with that he seems to be close with still like that. Um, and it, or it doesn't feel like a really superficial relationship, yeah. Um, that he has with people, and I think that's really important. Um, I don't know if that's something he sacrificed to get to this point. Um, there was always this thing with the, I didn't, I hate to even talk about it, but like the Illuminati, right? Where people would bring it up and they would always make reference to sacrifices, yeah. I think, one, I don't believe any of that, but mm-hmm. I do think there is validity to the idea that success comes at at a price, at a, at a price. Mm-hmm. it does come at a price and i'm very interested to always know what was the price that some of these people paid to get there and i can understand as far as like kanye because it's weird because we talk about how jay-z has his core group and even beyonce has her core group um but I can understand how, especially if you're coming up, um, what, how old was Kanye when he was getting famous? I mean, in his 20s. No? Yeah. So with like Jay Z, he was younger than that. I would I think. Yeah, he was. Beyonce but... was younger than that. So it's <clears throat> like you had to have that core group to come up. When you're in your 20s, you know, people working, people doing this, 
I, I mean, he wasn't that old. Like, let's be no, clear, I he know, wasn't that old. But I can understand how it's like, yo, I'm grinding, 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 grinding. I'm in the studio. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And then you never pick up phone calls from your friends or you never really pick up phone calls from your family. And now you're like going in whatever direction. I can understand how that split could happen. I don't know if that's what happened. But I can see how if you're busy chasing something that that's what's most important to you at that moment so the other things are just kind of have to you know take a pause like it happens part part of even with regular people like us part of being in the industry right especially rappers i always see this as like an interesting dynamic that a lot of them for the most part kind of is an exception to this but they don't even use their real names right yeah they they come up under under pseudonyms under you know that's my rap name and eventually, you start to become a caricature of yourself, and you start living up to what people expect you to be, what your music has been about. Um, and that can also come with, I, I see it where people will like give in to this idea of what they should be. And a lot of times, that can mean like you don't mess with certain people anymore because that's beneath you. That was you, regular you. That's not rapper you. That's not designer you. Yeah. Um, and we've seen that break away from other celebrities too, like a Nicki Minaj. I think it's I think it's the industry. Like I, it's like, okay, I'm a you gonna stay with me and then I'm big, 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 and now we're like, you know, I'm just gonna break up with you. And like I have my own crew now. Yeah. Or whatever the case. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Not not people, that's crazy that people would do that. <laughs> and I think it is a side effect of Hollywood. It is a side effect of success sometimes that this happens. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to, because we've been going on long, I kind of want to yeah. get into how this is personally, but I will say my favorite tweet out of all the Kanye tweets <laughs> that he deleted was after everything that he said, because he said some wild stuff, uh, he ended with, in Jesus' name, no more cap. <laughs> and I love that. I'm going to wait. It's kind of hot right now, but I will t- tweet that eventually. Um, cause that is, I mean, that's how you end a sentence in Jesus name. That was not a sentence. No more cap. To me, it is. Some people are waiting for him to write a book. Who? <laughs> that's, Who? <laughs> that's what people are saying. But I'm just like, the way he writes his sentences, I am not reading that book. <laughs> nah, he you definitely didn't have co-edit it. it. <laughs> so to, to progress the conversation, um, through all of this, right? So, and you kind of mentioned it before that I kind of think about this stuff, but in our own lives, what are we willing to do to be successful? I think you got to define success for yourself. That's very true. But I'll give an example. <laughs> and this is not a to the horn. This is just an example of how this could play out. At work, I had a situation where I was off. Well, no. This is a past employee. Right? Yeah, past employee yeah. for sure. But I um, went in and I asked for a raise. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. always everything is back and forth. So then when I asked for the raise, eventually, eventually <laughs> they came back to me like, all right, jocks, we're going to give you the raise. But what? in order to get the raise, you have to fire so-and-so and another employee. And this was also an employee that I brought to the company. Mm-hmm. Um and the reasoning was just because. Um, <laughs> and it, it felt very like tit for tat, quid pro quo, like you do this for me. I'll do this for you if you do this. And I wasn't having it. Granted, this was a substantial uh, increase in um, salary. Uh, yeah, so it was very <laughs> substantial. And I I see the way that they they positioned it, like we're doing you a favor, mm-hmm. right? We're doing you a favor. All you gotta do is this. And the way for me, the way I took it was that why did my success have to come at the cost of someone's demise? Um, I don't feel like the two should have been connected in that way. And I made it clear. So I made it super clear. Yo, and then it came back to me like, man, why are you making this such a big deal? Like, 
it's just one person. It, and then they flipped it like, man, if it was him, he would have probably mm. threw you under the bus a long time ago and got the raise. Like, that's 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 what stopped you? You care about like, somebody else like that? Bro, just fire him and keep it going. So, yeah. So, I, I said I'd have to say this. Um, I eventually... I eventually um, got to the point where it was either give me the raise or I quit. And it's also one, knowing how to leverage your power, mm-hmm. knowing how to leverage what you got, uh, and being secure in that. Because at the same time, I was also willing to walk away because that can go two ways. Mm-hmm. They can they can do what you ask or they can tell you, okay, pack it up. Um, but it, it, it got to the point where it's like... I think you have a supportive wife. Because <laughs> I was like, do it. Nah, he wasn't like that. <laughs> yes, so, I was. I was like, okay, go for it. Nah, so so. Oh, you mean like make the make the the uh, proposition, make the demand. Yeah, yeah make the demand. No, okay, not yeah, fire yeah. the guy. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. saying like, okay, if if you want to leave because of that, then I'm with you. I feel you. And for me, stand and, for something in a small in a small like situation like that. I can only imagine what some of these celebrities are proposition with. Hmm. Right, but for in our own lives, like man, what what do you do in that situation? You have a chance to. I'm talking like it was like a 25, 30 percent raise in salary type. Yeah, like are you willing to to what are you not willing to do to get it? Um, and it's man at some level, like man, it how is that the way? Because I I think I got to while this all was going on, I was questioning like man. Is that what it takes to be like one of the top executives? Because this was just for like a mid management role. Yeah. Like this is not even to be like the boss. Right. You're asking me to do this to be like one notch higher than where I was before. Yeah. So what what did you have to do to get to where you at? <laughs> if you thought that if this was nothing. If you asking me this, like and, it's and you think it's nothing? Yeah. What the hell? I mean, what what did you do? <laughs> you trying to normalize hell? Right? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that may be a topic for another day. But um, yeah, yeah, normalize saying hell. That's okay. That's really back. <laughs> but yes, so yeah, it's, it's man. What what are you willing to do or not do to be successful? And is that is that necessary to be successful? I think in the entertainment business. <clears throat> I know we're talking about our own lives, but in the entertainment business, it's like and our own life. We want more most of the time. We reach a goal. We're like, okay, I got that number one single or, you know, my album did such and such streams. Perfect. Let's start working on the next album. And now we got to get this person on there. We got to get this person on the track and this and this. And it's like, how are you going to get this person? <laughs> you know, like, what do you have to do to, who do you have to connect with to meet or whatever? And, and what about the people that worked on your first album that was with you when you ain't have nothing? Yeah, that made that smash hit. Like, what was wrong with them now? I'm too big for them now. Okay. So it's like we always want more. And that, um, especially knowing, right? Just that's why I said we have to define success for that person or for whoever we're talking about. Like, because a lot of people could be like, okay, this album was great and I have enough money now to live. (laughs) So goodbye entertainment industry, like you're not going to hear from me again. And, and I think sometimes that's what happens. Um, why we never hear from people ever again. Like they come up with one or two songs and it's like, I'm good. Like I bought my mama house. Everybody's, you know, everything is paid off. No debt. And now I could chill and still get paid. But some people, that's not what they want. Some people want the fame. Some people want, like, this, you know, their names in the press every day. They want to be trending on Twitter. They want all of that. Do you feel like you, Jackie, Michelle... I don't need to sell, that. sell out. Not sell out, because sell out has a negative connotation. You and I think this should all be negative. But do you feel like you have to lower maybe some of your standards or your morals to be successful? No. Do you have to sell um, non-eco-friendly garments? 
<laughs> to be, you know, Victoria's Secret? Mm-hmm. Or, like, do you have to have people stitching in China to their fingers bleed mm-hmm. to get your price point as low as possible so you could make the most profit possible right. to be successful? That's not my ministry. Mm. But that's a way to do it. That's how people do it. I mean, I've worked in the fashion industry so, for enough time to know, like, <laughs> these these shoes y'all buying, it, it's not worth uh, waiting in line for overnight. And I could tell you that much. But, you know. Depends on Here shoe. we are. <laughs> I wouldn't do it, but it depends on shit. I understand. Give me a price of a shoe. The cost of a shoe. The shoes won't be that expensive. If you're waiting the in Jordan line. The Jordan 3s. I if, don't you, know. if you're waiting in line a, to a buy, it's a $180 shoe. If you're waiting in line. If you buying it. $180? Yeah. If you if you buying it resale, yeah, you're going to spend a grip. But if you're waiting in line, that means you're at the store. You're paying $180. But it's not going to be there tomorrow. No. Um, no. And then resale is what? Like $300? Crazy. It depends. It depends. Like, yeah. Those, uh, oh. well, Virgil, you could, you could, you could yeah. make that shoe for like 15 bucks. Probably. No, you can't. <laughs> so, you know, have fun waiting in line, you know, for the experience, for the thrill, whatever the case. Okay, so not for you, but you agree for the average fashion designer that it was if that is what it takes to be successful. What what do you mean by that? Like is, that kind of manufacturing. Yeah, stuff. that kind of manufacturing using whatever lesser quality uh fabrics. Or 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 not to be using as a quote. success as I wouldn't say that because um, if we're talking about high end, it it depends on what level. Is that what Victoria's Secret does? Oh, for sure. I, I and I say say that to say are they are they the the high but of I, that industry? No. Who's the Who's the top? Of like lingerie, yeah. Are we talking about price point or I mean? Not price point. I guess I'm Victoria's Secret would revenue. be the top. Yeah, because they. I guess they would be the top just because you know, seven for thirty dollar panties. Like, yeah. I mean, yes, seven panties for thirty dollars. Like, how? How else are you gonna get that? Yeah. Or a semi annual sale all the time, or like the biggest fashion show that's televised everywhere all the time. Like, I guess they would be at the top, but there are others. Who are like higher brand, like yeah, the luxury. Brands, yeah, you don't the just wear these. Houses. Yeah, you don't just wear these on your periods. I kind of like. Wow. Don't. <laughs> Didn't think we we're gonna go there. That's what Victoria's Secret is. I'm not gonna lie to you, but okay. Um, yeah, like. So you think the key? There are pe- there are designers that I've interned for that I know they don't manufacture in china they literally manufacture in new york and but people are at what sewing but at what cost oh you paying right like two thousand dollars for a dress that still didn't cost a thousand dollars to me no 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 so it's still at but a crazy still premium sustainably made but it's still at a crazy premium for sure no matter what yes um because if you want to buy it you're gonna go to bonnie's I, or whatever so for you, because I think still we're at some point, so we're anomalies in this. We're not we're not here to be the head of revenue. Like we're not here to be revenue leaders in our in our fields. Right. But how do you stay sane in your pursuit of success? Mm. And how do you stay ethical in your pursuit of success? Because I think this is goes deeper than even people who want to be business owners. Yeah. What if what if you just want to be like get a promotion at your job? Like how do you get how do you it do that? Without <laughs> sleeping being, with your boss? Mm, mm, <laughs> right? Or selling out a coworker. How many of your coworkers when you were working would have sold you out for a promotion? Mm, probably like one. Only <laughs> that I could think that of. That you can think of. The rest were. <laughs> But carry on. But for you, back to it. You said the rest would? Yeah, they would. How do you remain sane in your I mean, pursuit? Knowing what I know now. Of success. Um, honestly, like redefining what success was for me was big. And then I, I don't 
knowing that I don't need much to be like good. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, and I have what a lot of people don't have in the entertainment industry, which is which is a stable family, a core group of friends, God. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know how else to answer that question. I think it's just a But how do you keep that? Because I would say everybody starts off that way, right? Like, most people start off that way. How do you keep that? Most people start off that way. I think so. I don't think people walk into situations with ill intent, typically. I don't think I came to work to, like, can't wait to sell somebody out today. (laughs) Can't wait to, you know, proposition my boss to... To see how I can make it back to his place, like wow, or her place. Okay. Um, I don't know how these people live in, but <laughs> yeah, like okay. So for me, right? I don't know. Yeah, when I think about it, I think you had a great point with redefining what success is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when your 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 ultimate goal is to be as famous as rich. As you can be, those things come at a cost that I don't think you can pay for without losing some of your ethics. I don't think. There may be people who have done it. Um, yeah. I I think what really... Um, I mean, I, I guess I was always... I kind of had this mind frame. You know, when you're younger, you think different. Um, like, oh, I want to be rich and do this and whatever. But... When we we were married at the time, and we were talking about getting a a lottery ticket. Oh, yeah. and even like the thought of it, I started like my heart started beating fast, but and like won? I was getting yeah, yeah, because I was getting anxious, and then I was just like, you know what? I don't want to win. Like <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> Like, because then you were like, oh, well, then we would have to move and then we would have to do this and this and this. And I'm just like, nah, like, I'm good. I'm good. Y'all keep that. Never playing. I'm good. (laughs) That is what happens to most celebrities. You think about somebody like Kanye West. He went from having not much to having a lot, probably relatively quick. Quick. So that, right? So... I think, like you said, redefining what success is for you. Because I also venture that it's easier to say some of the stuff we're saying right now. No, for sure. Because we don't have that much money, right? Mm -hmm. We have money. We have enough money. But we don't have that much money where we have to make some of these decisions. Yeah. I'm saying, okay, because this this is typically... But we also don't have enough money for you to just be like, I quit then. (laughs) So... So yes, yes. you have been in there, those situations. There. You get what I'm saying? But because this is this is the the guideline, what I typically see, and what is common to most people, and it's what you said earlier. Everybody wants more, right? Yeah. So say you you have whatever your business, you get twenty sales a month. You eventually would want. 25, 30 sales a month. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, after you do that for a couple months, you're going to be like, I want to do like 40, 50 sales a month. Yeah. And and in the pursuit for more, there's a threshold that you reach where it's like, the only way you can get more is if you start doing something funny, right? Um, The only way you can get more is if you lower your costs. Typically, if you lower your costs, you took money out of somewhere. Most likely, it's not going to be out of your profit. You're going to take it. If you have an employee, you're going to maybe take it out of their salary. If you yeah. have a, a factory, you're going to take, like, the money has to come from somewhere. It comes at a cost. Yeah. How do you not get to that point? I think all the, you have to have all those factors around you. You have to, you have to somehow... Remain humble by any means necessary. And I don't know what every individual person needs, but whatever that is, that's what you need to do. 
Yeah. Because, yeah, it could be friends. It could be, you know, if you need to live with your mom or, you know, have her live with you or I don't know. Like, you need that person in your ear all the time to just remind you, like, oh, yeah, I changed your diapers. Or, like, you know, Mm -hmm. like, not that you, you ain't really nothing, but. I remember you from North Miami, like yeah. <laughs> you was at the corner store. Most people though, when they reach a certain level of success, I don't want to talk to those people anymore. Because that's a mind shift then. I don't know what's I don't know what's I, I think I think a lot of people get to the point where it's like anything that reminds me of what I used to be like, why do I want that around me? I'm not that anymore. Yeah. I'm Kanye West. Like yeah. I'm not the Kanye West that you saw in Chicago. Yeah. I'm the Kanye West that you saw on you know, Letterman or... So my girl has to match that. Yes. My house has to match my that. My house has to match that. My bank account has to match that. My kids. And it's... It comes at a price. Um, but I, I think I think the key, like you said, is one, being able to define success for yourself. Mm-hmm. Because for me, like when I thought about that situation that I was in, I did not want... To have that on my resume, on my record, that that is what I had to do to get where I was. I find more joy, more pride in, in but my... But you would have been the only one to know. You and that person. Know what? That that's what you had to do. It's not like... I never people, told that person. Well, No, I'm talking about the person who asked you. It would have been oh, yeah. you and them. Yeah. And that person would have lost their job. And you would have got your promotion. Kept it moving. And that's it. it nobody on your resume, it, it wouldn't have stated that. My, There's no record keeping. There's no, you know. My my conscious. Transcripts. Enough. My conscious is enough. Um, I, I, I. So you have to have a conscience. Kanye yes. That one? Because. Kanye doesn't have a conscience. My sin is not against man, right? My sin is against God. You don't want to answer that question. No, I, I was literally in mid thought, and I think this is an important thought. Okay, go ahead and preach. Oh, you want to play? You you can do something where you don't physically hurt someone that's still wrong because you and God know that it was wrong, right? right? Um, and it'll eat you up. It should eat you up if if <laughs> if if you if you're of that cloth, right? If if you're of that, if you have a soul. Yeah. It should eat you up. Um, because, yeah, like you said, nobody would have known. Um, you could keep going on. But but if you have that conscience, if you have that 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 mind where it's like, bro, it's, did you have to step on somebody to be more successful? I don't think you have to. But I don't think most people are willing to do what it takes to be successful on their own. Yeah. Um. I'm not, but I'm, this is, that's what I want. I'm, I'm built for that. Like, I think you have to want that. Um, I don't want the easy dollar. I don't know. I take it back. I, I do want an easy dollar sometimes. <laughs> I didn't want that dollar. Not every dollar is worth it. Yeah. And that takes a level of contentment because I'm also in a position where I'm comfortable. If you're not comfortable where you are, yeah, you might. That's and that's the thing. It's one of those things where we were. It's the idea that <laughs> um, making sure that your desires, you know, at least as a Christian, mm-hmm. align with the desires that God has for you. Mm-hmm. And if you don't do that, then you get situations like. I mean, okay, so even, like, the celebrity thing, where you see somebody, it's like, they start off, and it's like, okay, cool, that album was good, and they look this way. And the next album is like, did she do something to her nose or something? Mm-hmm. Some walk. And then the, ne- then the next album is like, did she enhance her butt? Some walk. Okay, now her boobs are, like, really big. Like, she has a really small front. And it's just, like, more. I just need more. I need more. First of all, I have more money, so it's like I have more things to do, right? <clears throat> um, I don't. I don't know how you don't get sucked into that. 
How you don't? Yeah. I mean, besides, you know, the things that we listed, but... Your core values. Yeah. Even if you aren't a Christian, you should have core values um, that are true to yourself. And... Because you don't have to not have a nice house as a celebrity. You can still have a... That's not true. What do you mean? Okay. I'm saying you don't have to not have a nice house. You can still get the biggest house if you want. Like, you can afford it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But, and like, I like Ari Lennox. So, I'm going to use her as an example. She just bought a house. Mm -hmm. And granted, she's not on the scale of like Cardi B, fame-wise or money-wise. But when you see, I mean, Cardi B has a, a literal balcony in her living room. And like, takes up. Almost all of Atlanta. I'm exaggerating, but it's a huge house. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you see Ari, and she's like, oh, she has, like, a little deck, you know? The side of her house probably needs to be painted a little bit. Like, Yeah, it's it's a fixer-upper. Yeah, but it's like, and that's on brand for her, I Mm -hmm. guess. You know, that could also be a thing. But I'm just like, why not? Like, is it, it, it reaches a level where it's like, Yes, and similar for us, it's easier when you're at like a, a certain level. But when you get to a level where you can afford something like that, how do you act? Yeah, and um, then are you complacent if you stop pursuing more? I don't think. I don't think that you ha- you you can you should ever be complacent. With where you're at, right? I think I think there's something to always wanting to get better. Yeah. We just always, for me, you always have to consider the cost. What that will cost you to get to the next level. You have to consider the cost. Um, I, because yes, it, it can get to a point where you, you are settled. And you're comfortable, but you don't pursue more. And I don't know if that's better. I don't want Ari to only be able to afford that house. <laughs> I want Ari to be able to afford a house as big as Cardi B, which means she will have to make better music, probably better marketing for her music. I don't know. But why, if she is good, if her no, no, no success for her is like oh. I I bought a house by myself in my hometown. Never thought I could have done this. And you know what? I like working on the lawn by myself. There's a difference. <laughs> I, I and when I say okay, I don't want to equate what I what I want for Ari to money, right? Right. I want her to because the the issue with it typically, and and maybe this isn't always true for the arts, but the better you get. Typically, the more the money more you, you should get. make. Yeah. Typically, but that's 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 not always true in the arts. I understand that. Yeah. So somebody like Ari, because of the music that she makes, even her best music might not sell as much as the ratchet music that Cardi B makes. Yeah. I understand that, but I'm just saying I don't think Ari should ever stop striving for more. Yes, for sure. And for better. I don't think she should ever stop striving for more and better. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think any of us should. Because, man. I just don't think. We walked into a topic, but I'll I'll wait. What? Because I think this always comes into play with Christians and big churches. At what point is it too much? At what point have you made too much money? What, as the pastor or as well? Or even as a, as a ministry. Are you making too much money? Like, should you not want to make more money? Should your pastor not want to make more money? Should he reach a salary and never make more money than that ever again? Because, no. but some people feel like that. I don't think that's biblical. That they we, we, can, we, can talk about that we can talk about that another day. We can talk about that day. And actually, that yeah. That was a curveball. And not necessarily because... I feel like all of this can kind of fall under a category that I don't want to talk about on the podcast tonight. I kind of want to wrap this up. <laughs> but okay, I but that's t- what I mean. You you shouldn't want to be complacent. Yes. You should still continue in your success and reach new goals, et cetera, et cetera. But 
you should be humble in the process. The process should humble you every time, I think. Hopefully. Because if you continue to strive for more, that should show you like, oh, there's still more. <laughs> like, So I'm not as big as I thought I was or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Like, that should show you like, with every place that every new place we travel to, it's like, oh man, like this world is really big. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a lot of people here. Yeah. We have not even seen like an ounce of how many people are here. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I definitely think that's a good point. Um, still finding ways to be humble. Yeah. In growth, because that's really hard. It's hard to tell somebody who is quote unquote the best at their craft to be humble. Why? I am the best. <laughs> what is there to be humble about? Yeah. Um, but I think that is a necessary attribute to remain sane in your pursuit of success. But yeah. Don't let them taint your soul. Hey, what's the price of a black man life? Okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this was definitely a deeper pillow talk than I expected. <laughs> it was fun though. Um, so yeah. yeah. You got any final thoughts? Uh, nah, you done? Be humble. Sit down. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, hey, look. I think it's a great topic. I think people talking about this, considering this, because especially in our in our stage of our careers, we're all young. For the most part, our listeners are young. We're all, you know, moving up in our life. At what cost? Consider the cost it takes to, to get where you want. And, you know, think about it. It's, do you have to be a slime wall <laughs> to be great? I don't think so, but yeah. you just got to figure out how to do it. Yeah. Let so. us know your thoughts. Yeah, man. Uh, I think I'm, I'm ready to end this podcast. Yeah. Get ready for a good night. I leave you with this question, though. We can talk about this another day. You don't have to answer this. Is all of this the result of capitalism? Think about it. Sleep on it. Um, that's what you wanted to end for on. sure because I have a whole nother take a whole nother podcast line of thought on this is all of this the result of capitalism I bid you do <laughs> bye guys alright y'all peace then I might swear I dribble off deuce deuce I that you might work I wanna pull up on you then I might swear I dribble off deuce deuce I that you might work I that you might work that you might work.